Right, welcome back. I thought I'd make a quick video on digital multimeters. Now, I've had this old multimeter, um, which I got from Maplins in the UK a few years ago. I've had flukes prior to this, but I got this one because it was nice and small and compact. Uh, just great for the job I was doing at the time. Now, it still works, it's still fine. Uh, however, it's got a couple of problems. I wanted a meter that would do capacitance, basic frequency, and also have protection against popping the leads in the wrong place. We've all done it where we've set this to amps and put it on volts and blown the um, and blown the fuses. So I wanted that on protection. Now, uh, in part of my job, I do actually have to work on uh, 415 volts. So you can see this meter was never any good for that. If you look at the, the safety categories of meters, the um, they're, they're, they go from category one all the way up to category four and uh, it's only from category three that they become suitable for work on three phase insulation so i'm going to make that uh, point straight away that um, the meter i'm about to show you or this meter should never be used on 415 volt supplies right so i didn't want to spend a load of money uh, it had to be reasonably priced i just want something in the shack something different i can use it's got extra features after a bit of search on ebay I found this. This is the Mestec DM100C and it comes with a bit of protective film over this screen. Now I have seen another review on this meter which says this actual screen under here is quite soft so they recommend you putting a, um, a mobile phone screen protector on there if you're going to pop it in your toolbox and things. So anyway let's just pop this one down. I think you'll agree from first impressions it looks pretty pretty smart. So let's quickly go through some of the features of this DVM. You might be after a DVM for the shack uh, or for just general use anyway. And uh, I think this looks pretty decent. So let's go through some of its features. Before we do that, let's just have a quick look at the probes that come with it. Now, the one of the things you'll find with a lot of these cheaper meters is they do come now with these probe protection um, caps on the end to meet the various standards. But what you might find is that this prohibits you from getting into places. But the, the advantage is, of course, there that you can actually remove these as, as on most of the quality leads. Now, it's very apparent when you compare these leads to the, um, the fluke leads. I'll just get you some fluke leads. Now, when you look at the, the thickness of the cable here and the general quality of the actual um, probes, you can see where these cheaper meter manufacturers save their money. Um, I always like to use decent quality probes. Now, these ones on this meter appear to have the same shrouded banana plug type connector on the inside as the fluke. So you can actually use your fluke leads on the cheaper meters. And that would, that's something that I would suggest you do if you are using your meter on high voltage. The other thing that you get with this meter is a couple of AA batteries and a J-type thermocouple which you can use for temperature measurement or temperature um, logging I was going to say but it doesn't actually have a logging feature that I'm aware of but it certainly will uh, measure your temperature. No mention of the safety category on this meter on the back of it which is a bit naughty. Um, it should carry that to meet the standards so again like I say don't go using this on uh, 415 volts. Um, I'm just having a quick flick through the manual to see if it tells you. It is fused on the amp, both of the amp uh, ranges are fused, 10 amp uh, range there is fused internally maximum, 10 amp. And you shouldn't in theory, um, obviously that is possible to blow those fuses, but uh, it does have this protection feature which I'll show you in a little bit, which will prevent you from doing the old classic of setting it on amps and connecting it across a volt a battery and blowing blowing the fuse but I can't see anything in here about the safety classification okay it doesn't seem to mention doesn't seem to mention it anywhere but just bear that in mind stick to 230 volts you should be good right I've dimmed down the lights a little bit so you can see the screen a little bit brighter and there you can see now the the screen on this um, is probably a screen that's suited better to working indoors. How well this would work outside, I've not tried. But as you can see, switching between the ranges, it switches nice and quick. There's no delay. What I find on some of the older multimeters I've tried, there is quite a delay in between switching ranges as it settles down. But this 
does switch nice and quick. And one of the main reasons uh, that I bought this was, like I say, I wanted the audible beep when I'm doing continuity testing. That's something I wanted, along with a decent capacitance meter and also basic frequency uh, for the projects that I use up to about one and a half kilohertz this will do on frequency so that's enough for the projects I need it for um, one of the things I'm going to show you straight from the bat is it does have a a light on the front of it so in any position if you turn if you push the torch you get quite a bright light actually decent uh, light which may or may not be useful for you and the other feature of this meter is that it has a non-contact voltage um, sensor which can detect mains so switching to the NCV point on here in theory you should be able to pass that up to any single conductor and it will actually uh, beep uh, under the presence of it so useful for in single conductor circuits for tracing live uh, mains wiring although be very very careful uh, using that for your defin definitive voltage test of course just a rough guide right, and here you can see if I bring the meter near this live cable here it's also it, it has a uh, proximity LEDs as well which which get greater as it picks up more of the threat now and HNL high and low comes upon the screen so you can see there, even in a multi multi conductor cable, it uh, it picks up the live cable nicely. The first thing I want to check is the continuity. This is part of the reason that I bought it. So we'll just now. Some of you might see there's a slight delay. There's a slight delay in between touching the probes and it beeping. Now some people might find that a pain in the bum if they're striping down connectors looking for the beep. I just thought I would mention that someone else on one of the reviews had pointed that out as well so but still I've got the beep that's what I was after I can wait I've not uh, got that uh, condition that I need it to uh, beep immediately but obviously it's it's checking the resistance as well as sensing the continuity so that's why there's probably a little bit of a delay there other meters don't do this this one does. Out of my box of capacitors I'll pick um, a big, medium and a small capacitor, a test all three. And bearing in mind these are fairly cheap and expensive capacitors, so I'm not sure what the percentage is on, on the, the capacitance values of these anyway, but they are nonetheless new capacitors. So let's give these a little try. Right, so on the 1000 microfarad capacitor here, we're reading 919.5 microfarads. So yeah, that's pretty close. I've no reason to disbelieve that. So we'll put in a medium sized capacitor and a small one and uh, we'll take it from there. Well we've now got a 330 microfarad capacitor in there and that's uh, pretty much spot on so uh, that's very very good indeed. So now I've put a uh, 100 nanofarad capacitor in there uh, 0.1 microfarad and it, we're reading 120. Okay so maybe that the tolerance on some of these capacitors varies more. Right so the first resistor we got in there uh, is a 30k resistor and we're reading 29.97k. Next resistor in there is a 33 ohm resistor and again pretty much spot on. I'm actually switching the ranges manually here but there is uh, an auto ohms range there if you need it. If you're not sure what the value of your resistor is or if you've forgotten the colour code. And the highest value resistor I've got here I think is a 1.2 mega ohm and we're reading 1.163 mega ohms on the meter. I'll just have a quick look in my box of stuff, see if I've got a higher resistor to check. I do indeed, I have a 3.3 mega ohm resistor and there you go, that's very very close again. And just for a bit of fun, let's um, the, the maximum uh, ra uh, range is up to 100 mega ohm on this, so even if I daisy chain a few of these together I can't get anywhere near that. But if you need a meter for, uh, for high resistance uh, measurements uh, then this seems to do that too. Well, I haven't got a, um, a signal generator for generating a frequency that this can measure. My signal generator, the lowest it goes, is 5 kilohertz. But um, I've seen other videos where uh, they've tested this and it does work up to about 1.5 kilohertz. So, uh, and that's all I need for the actual uh, for the project I needed it, this for. But you can see the viewing angle on the screen. Um, people have mentioned that that might be an issue. Um, 
but it actually looks pretty good in this light. Um, you know, it's easily readable on an angle, so I don't see but to see there's any particular problems uh, in that department with this meter. Like I say, in broad daylight, this might be more of an issue if you're regularly working on vehicles or you know out in the garden doing things it might be harder to read but I think for shack use it's absolutely perfect and like I say the speed with which it switches through the ranges is, is pretty decent right um, I'm not going to measure voltages um, I've done a little bit of playing around with this meter off camera so uh, I'll, I'll just show you one more feature of it which I find very very useful now you may have done this yourself in the past if you set if you if you're measuring current and you um, you connect your meter into the current the lead into the current setting on other meters in the past and then you measure you forget and you go back and measure a voltage you'll instantly blow the fuse because you're going across the shunt inside the meter. So however this meter's got a, a nice warning feature. So I'll just show you that. Just zoom out a little bit. Um, if we turn the meter on and we go to resistance for instance it tells us the lead is in the wrong the wrong place and we have to remove it and pop it back in and then we get um, we can measure our resistance now it, that in, in and of itself would not cause the fuse to blow but of course if you set the meter to the voltage uh, setting so read a DC or AC voltage reading and then you move the lead to read current you get that problem so which is great so that should help protect you against that really annoying thing that I'm sure we've all done where we've blown the internal fuse or or even worse on some meters that have no fuse protection whatsoever you can get very melty leads depending on what you're testing certainly if you're uh, poking around lithium polymer batteries you'll certainly do some damage there so that's a really really nice feature of this meter that I really like, um, a sort of feature that you only see tend to see on more expensive meters. Um, it has a hold feature again, which is a nice feature, particularly if you're measuring frequencies. Right, so I'm not going to go through every single click on this dial, but I'll give you a, a nice close up view of it so you can see the ranges there. It's getting a bit dazzled by the light here. Um, but you can obviously download the, the data sheet for this online anyway and have a little look yourself. Um, but um, I think this is a great little meter. The, the final thing that we'll do is we'll test the temperature uh, reading on it and to do that we'll go over to the 3D printer and we'll, we'll measure the, uh, the temperature of the bed as it's fairly accurately controlled. Right, the, the probe connects in at the bottom in place of the, your standard probes and you simply um, pop the meter down to degrees C or Fahrenheit. This is where your select button comes in which lets you change between degrees Celsius and degrees Fahrenheit. We'll, sit, we'll put it on degrees C as that's what we use here and we'll check it on the 3D printer. Right, now bearing in mind the 3D printer uses a, a tape element uh, temperature sensor. Uh, we're using a bead for Mr. here just placed underneath the mat so this isn't going to be perfectly accurate. Um, but we've set the temperature on the 3D printer base there to 60 degrees it's currently at 43 and our temperature sensor has risen to 35, 36 going up. So we'll wait for it to get up to 60 and we'll have a probe around to see if we are measuring a similar temperature. Right, given it a little bit of time to settle and we've kept the probe in the same position and we're set at 60 degrees and we're picking up 56 on the thermocouple. Um, I think that's probably quite close we might get a little bit better a better reading if we move it I'll just try that yeah moving the sensor to the center of the of the bed of the machine brought us right up to 60 degrees so it was just it was slightly off in that one corner there and that's where the heating elements and probably the temperature sensor is actually fixed underneath the printer I've not looked but there we go so pretty much cock on much like more expensive meters, the probes can be stored on the back of the meter there like that and the associated cable wrapped around the meter or however you want to do it. Um, uh, you can also obviously fit this in a case or a number of different carrying cases for the flukes that would fit this meter should you wish to carry it about. And bear in mind, like I said, just watch this, uh, this screen, quite a soft plastic. So if you're going to use one of these in a toolbox, 
um, definitely just get a uh, screen protector for it, uh, a, mo a suitably sized mobile phone. Um, okay, what else can I say? I haven't shown you the stand. Um, again, for bench use, really useful hammer stand. It's only got the two positions, um, but it folds out nice and easy. And it, you know, there you go, you're at about a 45 degree angle, uh, which is very similar to most of my other test instruments, so that matches that perfectly fine. Um, like I said, I didn't mention it does have a micro amp reading a setting there for uh, measuring milliamps and microamps. Um, and really, you know, like I say, the features of this uh, is I'll put a link to where you can get one of these from Amazon and the specs of that are all in there. So I wanted to, this to be a short video. It's turned out a lot longer than I thought it would. Uh, but anyway, I hope you've enjoyed that. I want to do a few more of these types of videos, just um, bringing some equipment to you that you may not know uh, exists. And I've used this, uh, although this uh, looks like an unboxing, I've been using this meter for a little while now and uh, it's proven to be be very good it's been very very uh, very nice to use and um, I had a lot of um, sort out a lot of resistors and bits and bobs out of a tin I had and put them in drawers and this was lovely uh, worked really really fast with no problems at all and so I'm very very pleased with the purchase and I think for under I think the 32 pounds I paid for this um, I don't think you can get anything better for the money but uh, please, if you do spot one uh, or a meter that you think is better value for money please leave that in the comments and uh, perhaps we'll look at that on another video right if you have been watching thanks ever so much we'll catch you on the next one take care bye now